Welcome back. You're watching To The Point. There's no doubt the Supreme Court's pronouncement that MPs facing charges must not become ministers reflects the popular mood of the country. It's also the sort of moral advice many people believe our politicians should periodically be given. But in this specific instance, does it run foul of both the law as well as the principle of fairness? With me to answer that deeper concern is the author of The Difficulty of Being Good on the Subtle Art of Dharma, Kurcharan Das, Senior Supreme Court Lawyer Dushyant Dave, BJP Lok Sabha MP and Spokesperson Rajiv Pratap Rudi, and Congress Rajya Sabha MP and Spokesperson Abhishek Singhvi. Dushyant Dave, yesterday a five bench constitutional judgment advised the Prime Minister in the strongest possible terms that MPs facing serious charges where a court has taken, in fact, cognizance and framed charges must not be made ministers. Now, in your eyes, was that badly needed advice or was it a bit gratuitous? Because anyway, all PMs know this and secondly, the court can't enforce it. I think uh, the court has really overstepped its limits because it's no part of function of the court except when the president seeks an opinion from the Supreme Court to really advise anybody, including the prime minister or the chief ministers. So it would have been absolutely proper because the court has repeatedly found in the judgment that there is no such disqualification in either under the constitution or under the representation of People's Act. Having found that and having found that it's for the prime minister to really decide who is a suitable person to be appointed as the minister, I don't think the judges should have really gone into the question and offered any kind of a you know, uh, pro bono advice to the government, the politicians. So to that extent, I do feel that uh, the judges have really overstepped uh, their jurisdiction. In fact, in the light of what you said, Dushan Dave, I want to put a second question to you. You see, after stating that MPs facing serious charges where a court has in fact framed charges should not be ministers, this is what the judgment says, and I'm quoting, this is what the constitution suggests and that is the constitutional expectation from the Prime Minister. Now you know and I know that there is no constitutional or legal bar against such people becoming ministers. So then can you really claim this is what the constitution suggests and this is the constitutional expectation? Well, judges have put it on a you know, philosophical platform. They say that uh, you know, good governance, constitutional morality and constitutional trust really oblige the Prime Minister or the Chief Minister concerned not to appoint such a person and if he is appointed to remove him. But I think uh, it, you know, it's, uh, it's really impossible in a democracy for anybody to because the judges are very very careful in saying that the constitution does not give any such you know, indication directly or indirectly. So to put it on philosophical basis I think is really highly improper. Let me bring in Gurcharan Das. Gurcharan Das, you're the author of a book, very interestingly called The Difficulty of Being Good. Now here we have a Supreme Court, as said by Dushyant Dave, overstepping its jurisdiction and advising the Prime Minister on how to be good and giving moral and philosophical advice that goes way beyond the Constitution's requirements and the jurisdictional powers of the Supreme Court. Do you concur with Dushyant Dave that the Supreme Court has overstepped its mark? Or do you believe that that consideration apart, this was badly needed advice and you're very happy the Supreme Court has given it to the Prime Minister? Which yeah. is your answer? I think uh, I'm happy that the Supreme Court has acted in this restrained manner. Uh, we've had too much, in fact, overreach on the part of the Supreme Court in recent times. And I personally, I, I do believe that um, that this, 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 was, this was the right thing to do. Uh, and I think this is an issue of constitutional morality. Okay. I think it's, an uh, it's a question of the Prime Minister's own moral uh, conduct and conscience. Okay. And, 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 and uh, I, I, do, I, I do think that this is going to put pressure on the Prime Minister. Okay, well, let's, let, let's come to what sort of pressure it comes in a moment's time. I want to stick for a while on whether the Supreme Court was right or wrong, whether the Supreme Court has breached its jurisdictional powers by giving this moral advice. Rajiv Pratap Rudi, the argument in support of the Supreme Court's position is that a court only frames charges 
after a judge has applied his judicial mind. And clearly, at that point, there is the assumption that the person could be culpable and therefore the person has to face a trial. Don't you think at that point the Caesar's wife principle should apply, that Caesar's wife should be above suspicion, therefore ministers should be above suspicion and therefore a man who's culpable facing a trial shouldn't be a minister? Well, I think uh, what the Supreme Court has said, uh, or has uh, rather uh, stated, and it has refrained from disqualifying anyone, is a common sentiment which is being shared uh, in the country, and it has been shared by the Prime Minister as well. So it is nothing very unusual. Uh, I would not be the right person to comment whether they have uh, surpassed their jurisdiction or not. But if you look in this country, uh, what people think about politicians, especially in the background of what has been happening, if I have to tell you two case examples, there is, there, was, there, is, there is a state of Jharkhand in which an independent MLA who did not have a political manifesto, who did not have an ideology, who did not have a political party, was made the chief minister of that state and continued to be the chief minister of that state, ruling the fate of the state for two years and finally he was arrested. You mean Mr. State. Koda? You mean there Mr. Koda? There is another state called Bihar in which a chief minister goes to jail. In, Yes, Mr. Koda, in, there is a different state called Bihar where I come from, where the chief minister of the state goes to jail and positions his wife as the chief minister. And the best part is that chief minister who was then uh, the chief minister, Mr. Lalu Prashad Yadav, he was convicted. Now, he was convicted, was languishing in jail, and under the law, he was not allowed to contest election, so I had to contest his wife. But the court itself, which you are talking about and which we are discussing, okay. gave Mr. Lalu Prashad Yadav a bail. So and, and gave him the freedom to campaign all over the country and all over the state as if he was he thromped back to victory by simply getting okay. a bail. Yo, yo. A man who is convicted, okay. who but, is but under your... conviction, cannot contest elections, become a, becomes campaign. I take... If the country watches all this, I take your I point, think what Mr. Rudy. Supreme Court has said, or for for that matter, what the Prime Minister has said, that's no different. Okay, I take your point. No although different. you have widened the discussion very considerably and, with and your examples, are hated I want to come back narrowly to what the Supreme Court has said in this instance. Let me put to you, Abhishek Singhvi, the argument against the Supreme Court's position. It's that even though we're only talking of MPs where a court has in fact framed charges against them, but those MPs could still be innocent. In fact, you know as a lawyer better than I do that most people against whom courts frame charges actually end up being acquitted, not convicted. The majority of people against whom charges are framed are acquitted. Therefore, if you debar such MPs from becoming ministers, you would in effect be punishing them, even though they end up being innocent. Is that fair? What you are, what you are saying, Karan, is obviously right, which is why the Supreme Court has given a very strange cocktail here, a very odd judgment, and it's a cocktail of politics, sentiment, uh, law. Let's quickly disentangle. In law, the judgment is obviously indefensible for both extremes. A, it stops short of doing what the petitioner asked because the court realized it has no power. There is no constitutional provision, there is no power to declare it and as you put it, uh, if you start having subjective views of guilt, then you can get nowhere. But second point is even more funny. If it wanted to overstep, as the court does, then it should have gone the whole hog instead of giving a mere homily. It should have given a uniform test because otherwise we end up only in seminar rooms and discussions. No party will follow it in a uniform manner. You should have laid down a set of guidelines that if you are, charge, uh, if you are facing charges framed by the court in XYZ offences, then you are disqualified. Okay. It does neither. It stops short, denies relief and then gives a homily. But very quickly, in political terms, I believe that there is a simple reason why all political parties must do it and I don't want to get into tutu meme of it because the sentiment outside of the courts of law and outside of parliament is look there is a large amount of crookedness and crime here okay. you must self-regulate it stop these people from coming in so there was a uniform test a, a single test in okay. five offenses of a serious nature no tickets to be given or no ministry right. birth to be given let me come back to Shyam Dave because you were a great critic of this judgment. You believe, in fact, the court has hugely overstepped its jurisdiction. Let me put to you one of the reasons why the court feels such MLAs and MPs must be debarred from being ministers. It's to do with the fact 
that if they are made ministers, and I'm quoting from the judgment, they could thwart or hinder the canons of constitutional morality or the principles of good governance. And eventually, the court says, they could diminish constitutional trust. Do you really believe that such MPs and MLAs, if they come ministers, would be a hindrance to good governance? Look, there are two ways of looking at it. Dushyan Dave as a citizen perhaps would agree with the judgment very easily, as Mr. Rudi himself you know, points out. But Dushyan Dave as a lawyer finds it very difficult to digest this judgment. So that's the dichotomy, that's the dilemma that even I face as a lawyer. And I definitely have no doubt in my mind that you know, this kind of politicians are not a, you know, a monopoly of any one political party. They are across the political spectrum. And therefore, as uh, Dr. Singhvi rightly points out, and as Ms. Rudy Pratap also agrees, that the sentiment across in the nation is that we should try and stop them. But unfortunately, nobody has been able to stop it. Prime okay. Minister himself, when he was Chief Minister of Gujarat, did not take any action against Purushottam Solanki or Babu Bhai Bokharia. So, I mean, it's, it's very, very difficult for us to really, because they are all, you know, uh, acutely uh, compromised because of political compulsions. Okay. And unless and until the parliament, you know, gets into the act, brings a law immediately, because this judgment perhaps can be an eye-opener to the parliament. And if there is really good intention on the part of the government, as Mr. Rudy right. rightly points out, the prime minister would like to do it. They could bring the law on the Judges Appointment Commission bill in yeah, 48 yeah, yeah, hours. Yeah, 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 they can bring such law here Absolutely. and, you know, help the nation. Yes, so but you're, 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 you're extending the discussion related. into, a, you're extending the discussion way beyond the concern that we have tonight, which is limited to whether the Supreme Court was right or wrong. You're saying that the Supreme Court would be justified if, in fact, this has the impact of getting the government to change the law, not just here, but in a variety of areas. And that may be right. It may be a catalyst for change. But that's not what the Supreme Court intended. Let me come back narrowly with you, Gurcharan Das, to that argument from the Supreme Court that such MPs and MLAs are a hindrance to good governance. Now, I put it to you that there's no link at all between good governance, which is administrative and managerial skills and talent, and the aspersions on the integrity of a man, particularly when those aspersions may be unfounded because the man may turn out to be innocent. And I'll give you an example, a notorious one, no doubt, of Lalu Yadav. He became railway minister having spent time in jail. He was facing court cases. The charges had been framed. And yet, Water and Harvard believed he was such a good railway minister, they did case studies on him. And he got a lot of praise across the board from people for being an effective rail minister. Now, the Supreme Court has been disproven by the fact that this man, on whom there were question marks of integrity, turned out to be a good administrator. Well, yes, of course, it's possible to be a good administrator, Karan, and still be corrupt and still be a villain. However, I would say that in, in, inside the chances, when a man has, done, has been guilty of wrongdoing in one area, and the chances are that person's character uh, But is he's not guilty. Forgive me, Gurcharan Das. Is, Even if charges are framed against you, you're not guilty. So you're jumping no, no, to a I conclusion you. that's you not can justified. Be innocent, uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is that I think the burden is on the other side. The burden is on the other side. And therefore, the best thing the Supreme Court actually should have done, along with the suggestion that was made a few minutes ago, what is that they should actually have agreed to fast track the, for all okay, ministers and MPs within that one year. Yeah. The Supreme Court has talked about it. Let's fast track, and yet when Mr. Modi suggested we fast track the, uh, the, the, the trials in the case of tainted MPs and ministers, you know, the Supreme Court raised, Absolutely. Uh, You're absolutely right in pointing out the very many contradictions in the position the Supreme Court has taken. And I want to really put that to Rajiv Pratap Rudi. Rajiv Pratap Rudi, you supported the Supreme Court because you believe that it is echoing a popular sentiment, a deep concern that we in our country have. And there's no doubt about it. But do you believe that it is accurate to say that, and this is one of the arguments the Supreme Court makes, that such MPs, if they become ministers, will be vulnerable to bad pressures 
to wrong influences. And that's the second reason why they mustn't become ministers. That because a man is facing charges in a court, he will be vulnerable to people's pressures, he will make compromises and therefore don't put him there. Do you believe that? Uh, my, my submission is slightly different here. It's the common perception about politicians and politicians have become a figure of hate in this country for whatever they have been doing. And this discredit needs to be corrected because uh, we as politicians are get clubbed to people who may have a records which, which is not exactly good to be a public representative. But in this present political system which we have, which is the best minister parliamentary form of government, what we are, you are discussing on the television is irrelevant for the political parties because for electability, caste is more important, geographical religion, geographical location, religion, uh, okay. muscle, money are more important than your academics or your can background. I, can I stop so you? when the faulty system you have adopted and which cares for the political class, there needs to be a larger uh, discussion on the subject whether merit prevails on the political representative okay, but or the political representative. Can I, can I stop you? In the system can I, can I put this to you, Mr. Rudy? Your, so your, I think this is a larger issue. Okay, it's in yes. that larger context I want to put this to you. You're in the unique position of being a politician who's actually defending what the Supreme Court has done. You believe it reflects the wider sentiment of the country. In which case, what about this? The Association for Democratic Reform says that 14 of Mr. Modi's ministers face criminal cases. Eight of them face what the ADR calls serious cases. In the light of what the Supreme Court has said, in the light of the fact that you endorse the Supreme Court, what do you think Mr. Modi should do about those ministers? I think uh, the idea of is, uh, report is a trash. I do not know where they <laughs> get this. And at least I do not know and the photos and the figures which I have seen. I, at least you, I don't go, don't go by the papers. And when the Supreme Court talks about them, they don't talk about these politicians. Uh, they are talking about hardcore politicians. No, no, no. One of your cabinet ministers, Uma Bharti, one of your cabinet ministers, Uma Bharti, has I, a case I, I'm, I'm framed about, by a court. I'm reading about her She's admitted it herself. Her. No, 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 you, you read through papers, you talk whatever you want, but this doesn't work like that. You, we know what is, what is cleansing politics and what is actually, you're talking about Dr. Okay. Harshwardhan being a criminal, Manika Gandhi being a criminal, uh, and you're talking uh, not about... Not being a criminal, uh, facing Singh, charges, Obama, not being a criminal, criminal, facing I charges. Would, but if there are substantive, and, and the Prime Minister would not keep anyone like this. All so right. I think you are, you are completely misconceived okay. as far as taking... Let me put the opposite, out. let me put but the opposite to you, Abhishek Singhvi. What I want to say is... Just you, you, a second, my friend. It's very difficult. Uh, it's very difficult to complete a sentence with Mr. Karan Thapa. That's a whole trash thing. Anyway, go ahead. I want to put the opposite. Mr. Uh, Abhishek Singhvi was critical of what the Supreme Court did. You argue that, in fact, they've fallen effectively between two stools. Your position is therefore the opposite of Mr. Rudy's. What then, in the light of the fact you disagree with the Supreme Court, should Mr. Modi do about the 14 ministers? And I'll mention in particular Uma Bharti yes. because in her case, charges have been framed in one instance, that is the Ram Janmabhoomi case. What should happen in that instance? Uh, two points, Karan. Quickly. If you, if you want to be constructive, if we don't want to just make dip score debating points, the crux of the problem, a problem which the Supreme Court has not addressed because they stopped short at only giving a homily, a problem which the political mm. class has not addressed because there is no consensus, is the lack of certain uh, a, a, a criteria and a test which is uniform. Now, while I agree with you that subjectivity is bad. What for about kids, Mr. Modi? I don't That's agree the question. With you. That no, I'm, I'm I'm answering about Mr. Modi. What Mr. Modi needs to do, and in fact all political parties need to do, is to design a uniform criterion because you have to say not conviction, which is what you are saying. I don't agree with that because conviction is the closest to okay. eternity in our country. So you need to have a uniform test that when charges are framed on offences, let us say, having a maximum punishment above X years. Okay. You say 7, 10, 6, whatever. Then, and, and not mere oh. charge sheet, but charges framed by a judicial... Yeah, government. I understand. Then, uniformly across the board, you shall be eliminated. Okay. I, I'm going now, to that happens because then you can't argue. Absolutely. I'm going to Bharti is facing yes, a serious charge. I can face a less serious charge. I, I'll that stop you there. Abhishek Singhvi, I'll Some stop you there. Some are facing charges of mere writing. I'll stop. Abhishek Singhvi, I'm running out of time. I'll stop you there. I'll point out for line. the audience that what you're proposing is something the Election Commission has proposed many, many times. 
Politicians of both parties have rejected it. It's not a new proposal. The Election Commission has been hammering at governments for a decade I, and more. I, for the, one, support it with some detailed changes. Unfortunately, I your government support didn't support it. You can your government detail, didn't support it. You made today. Sushant Dave, I want to go back to you as a lawyer. What do you think, given that the Supreme Court has pronounced in this way, regardless of your concerns about that pronouncement, what do you think this now does to Mr. Modi and his ministers? And Mr. Modi and his ministers are not unique. Dr. Manmohan Singh had ministers who were also faced with charges framed by a court of murder, Shibu Soren being one of them. But that's now history. What do you think Mr. Modi should do? Give me a short, sharp answer because I'll end with you. I think Mr. Modi would do what every politician is expected to do. We all live in fool's paradise to believe that the politicians will really take any steps to cleanse the public life. I don't think they all have the same approach and I don't think anything more will happen out, out of this decision. In other words, the Supreme Court will have delivered a homily that will have fallen on deaf ears. Is that what you're saying? Quick yes or no? Absolutely. All right. But the interesting thing is Mr. Rudy completely supports it, yet he thinks there is no need for Mr. Modi to act. And the other interesting thing is Abhishek Singh, he does not support what the Supreme Court has done, but he believes that it is time for politicians to draw up a common criteria so that they can act. How interesting, the two opposition politicians opposed to each other both disagree and yet end up with the same outcome. My thanks to all four of my guests for joining me and also to Kurcharan Das who could only join us by telephone. Thanks for watching this particular episode of To The Point. Coming up next, a power pack bulletin with me. No hype, no noise, but just the top stories with all the angles covered. Stay tuned to Headlines Today.